How are we doing, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another team review, this time the Marauders. Now, the Marauders are an incomplete team, but we have what we have. So I'm going to review the four characters and filling in for the fifth slot is Karen. Hopefully Karen gets reworked and becomes a usable healer. That said, we're going to take a look at this team from the normal three perspectives. The first being the availability, the second uh, being usability and the places in which this team can be used. And the third will be breakpoints, investment levels that uh, you're going to need to see in order to get max value, including tier fours. So without going into too much detail, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a random blitz battle. Sure, let's see this and let's fire off as we talk about the availability. Wait, this isn't the team I picked. Anyway... The Marauders have weird availability. Two of the characters have been available for about a year and a half. Mystique, available as a node farmable character in the Villains campaign, I believe. And Sabretooth is available in the Raid store. Not high priority early access characters, but they do help you unlock Magneto. And that usually means you probably will have them by the time you would start working on this team. Uh, Strife is available in the Blitz store, which is terrible because Strife is a terrible character, and that means that when you open a Blitz orb, there's a chance you get Strife. Unfortunate, but what are you going to do? The only other character that has no accessibility right now is Mr. Sinister. He is in arbitrary orbs like Premiums and Ultimus and Mega Orbs, but you can't really target farm him right now. So, since the, he's completely inaccessible right now shy of spending money or getting lucky this team is not the most available adding to that the fact that this team is missing an entire character uh, to be complete uh, doesn't necessarily hurt it in that you get a lot of control uh, what hurts the team is of course strife so you may want to put a, an additional tank preferably a better tank on the team like Merc Riot Guard or Ravager Bruiser, uh, anyone that isn't Strife will make this team significantly better. Outside of that specifically, you can probably start considering this team as an endgame team. You're very unlikely to get too many of them uh, very early in the game, and if you do, because of how their kits are designed, and because of where they're useful, I wouldn't even recommend investing early anyway they're not particularly useful for many game modes well that's actually an entirely different conversation that said just keep in mind this is not an early game team and even if you get some of these characters early they're not necessarily going to help you progress early into mid into late game you're better off sticking with some of the more standard teams like the defenders the guardians pretty much anyone else. Now we can go straight into usability. This team, the Marauders team, is strange. It is very, very, very clearly an Alliance War defense team in that all of their kits in some way, shape, or form discuss being an Alliance War defense team. That said, they're one of the only Alliance War defense teams that is hard countered by the defenders for the most part in a reasonable punch up providing the investments are roughly the same uh, defenders i've used my very strong defenders to punch up probably about 80k depending on who the fifth character they chose was unfortunately being a team of all villains does mean punisher is going to have his way with you that said they are pretty good on both sides of the war and and a lot of that comes down to Mr. Sinister's total package. Mr. Sinister is one of the most unique and fun characters that has ever come out in this game with the ability to take over uh, the best character hopefully on your opponent's team and use them to your advantage. The downside to that is that character tends to be a little bit weaker with a little bit less damage uh, than your Sinister. They mostly keep Mr. Sinister's stats uh, give or take 20% or so for health and damage, but depending on who you take, you might end up with a stronger uh, team comp as a 6v1 is usually a little bit better than 5, especially when that 6 character is a non-minion, if that makes sense, like Greg with Hella or a Phoenix. So 
one of the weird tricks with Mr. Sinister and the Marauders team, if you're using them offensively or in blitz, is you choose a team that is a little bit strong or too strong, or maybe a team that you wouldn't necessarily be able to beat, like off the top of my head, if you saw an X-Men team in a blitz battle or a team with Ultron, you probably would just be able to use Mr. Sinister to clone the Ultron, and then all of a sudden you now have Ultron on your team. Uh, pretty solid all around. Using the team as kind of a, a Swiss Army knife to be able to defeat certain comps, uh, maybe a Brawler's team with Ms. Marvel and CM, something like that, that's really where they're best at. But as a defense team, they do hold a very, very, very strong kit that basically doesn't let opponents disrespect them. If you don't go into this fight with a clear-cut understanding of how it's going to go, uh, even how for how terrible Strife is, you're still going to end up losing because of how Mr. Sinister and them all work out. They're not necessarily, as a team, usable in raids. Uh, Marauders doesn't have a tag. They are mutants, and they will be okay in anything that requires mutants. They are villain characters, so anything that would require villains going forward or the villain's campaign, they'd be pretty okay. Other than that, they don't have any uh, jump out and grab you abilities. So as far as usableness, this is probably one of the most vanity style teams you're ever going to come across. And by vanity, I mean they don't necessarily do anything for you as a team. Perhaps an individual character like Mr. Sinister will. Sabretooth and Mystique are already characters that work very well on the Brotherhood team in lieu of Toad and Blob. So they all kind of have homes except Strife, who belongs uh, in a dumpster somewhere because he is useless. So you don't have to feel bad about investing in them because you're probably getting other value out of them. But because they need specific investments, because Mr. Sinister isn't very good, if you're familiar with my stream... Uh, I always tell people you either have a 50k Mr. Sinister or you don't have a Mr. Sinister. It doesn't matter how much weaker he is because the characters he's cloning are going to be so much weaker than the fight you're putting on, even at an even parity, that they're probably not even going to survive long enough to make a major difference. That said, you can find uses for them in war. They're, again, another war defense team, more or less, or offense team if you really want to be aggressive. They're a blitz team, not great in raids. Individual value you might see in Dark Dimension, but eh. Sinister is phenomenal on the offense side of Arena. You can even use Sabretooth and Mystique to kind of hedge a little bit and get a little bit of their kit value on offense, but on defense they don't get any of the value they get on war defense, so little bit lackluster while talking about teams you can use them with i've seen a lot of people use cable or ultron i'm gonna try to avoid recommending characters that are good on their own like put black bolt on this team you know that obviously a good character on their own would probably make this team better but there are some good options i like merc riot guard as an option cable is okay mainly because he does help mutants up uh, another healer, like you saw me use Night Nurse earlier, to make sure Strife stays alive because he's the only tank in the game that doesn't feel like a tank at gear tier 13. So I don't know how that feels for most players. But you, you want to kind of round out. To be fair, you can probably do okay with putting Drax on that team uh, if you need to or something to protect specifically Mr. Sinister. If Mr. Sinister can survive, it's very difficult to start killing him and the other characters as his passive will heal them. That's enough about usability. We're going to go straight into breakpoints. I've already discussed Mr. Sinister with you. Uh, if he's not 50k, and, and I know that sounds like a very high number, that's just how his kit is designed. His kit is designed to be an endgame bully character, not a early game power character. If you unlocked him early, by all means, you can use him to complete some of the campaign nodes. You can even get a little bit of value out of him in Arena, but that's going to run out real quick considering that he's currently unfarmable. Maybe if you had a 7-star Sinister on day one because you spent a lot of money and got very lucky, you might be okay. Other than that, you're probably not doing too well. But 
this is a team that by the time you've assembled it or intend on using it assembled, you should probably be able to get it to, like in previous videos, like 150k or about 30k each character. That team won't be particularly strong, uh, mostly because they don't have a fifth character and Sinister isn't really holding them out. Starting with the worst character on the team, we'll start with Strife for once. He has a very interesting kit. On paper, everything looks great. What ends up hurting him is his timing. So when we talk about tier four investments, Grandeur uh, increases the amount of barrier Strife gains when Mr. Sinister goes to 50% health. Okay. Um, in addition, it also gives mutant allies specifically and himself 10% resistance and villain allies and himself 10% focus. Cool. Uh, as it is, they get 40 of each at level 4. So that extra 10%, it's a war defense buff. You know how I feel about war defense characters. If you really, really, really want them to not get beaten by the defenders, give it a shot. Other than that, it's probably not doing much. Nullifying Blast looks absolutely great. It's an AoE ability block with a decent chunk of damage. He's probably not going to survive long enough to use it because it takes two turns to charge up. Superiority looks beautiful. Gain one taunt up to a maximum of three. Gain three deflect and bury yourself for 10% of his max health. Generate two ability energy for two random marauders. This would be absolutely amazing if he went after the rest of his team. So as a tank, it's great that he goes first because he's putting that taunt up. What's terrible is that he's generating two energy for an entire team who's at energy cap the second the fight starts. Mm. If he was slower, he'd be better. But no matter what, he seems to taunt every time on turn one. And every time that energy generation goes completely to waste, maybe if it gave himself energy, it would might be okay. But ultimately, he's going to taunt, he's going to gain deflex, and he doesn't have any stats, so he's going to die. And then Psychic Strike. This is probably the best thing when you're controlling him to do on turn one. It's a pretty decent single target attack damage. Uh, it steals the taunt. It steals the opponent's taunt. It actually technically doesn't. He gains taunt no matter what. Then it attempts to clear the taunt, which with his focus, you should be able to. And if Mr. Sinister is an ally, they could take all of the positive effects from that character to Mr. Sinister. Obviously, because Mr. Sinister, very much like Nick Fury, spreads his positive effects when he does his heal, almost exactly like Nick Fury, actually. It, it makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily worry. The difference between four positive effects and all positive effects, if they have six or seven positive effects on them, then maybe you're fighting in a different game mode than I am usually. I don't usually see more than two or three on any character, even in war, especially on basic, you know, the turn where I would basic with him. And he doesn't survive long enough to rip him off later anyway. So none of his tier fours really jump out. Moving on to Mystique. Mystique is the second worst character on this team instead of the third best, if that makes sense. Uh, everything she does is kind of dependent on who's around her. Uh, Subterfuge is great. On spawn, always gain evade. Cool, keeps her alive, but she's pretty tanky. Uh, always assist on non-attack abilities. Well, Sinister has two. Uh, Strife has one. Sabretooth has zero. Great. Uh, that... That basically just changes here, and it, it does specifically only affect war defense. It doesn't tell you that, but it does only matter on war defense if she's with Sinister. Cool. If it wasn't, if it was any time, it'd be amazing. But again, war defense, literally worst thing you could put in a character. Totally acceptable if you really want to build him up, but ultimately kind of a vanity investment, not something I would prioritize. Uh, her ult, it doesn't do damage. <laughs> so getting the tricked enemy to do damage, which is always a basic attack. So it's whatever their basic attack is, plus 200% damage. Okay, on AI, you don't know it's going to pick the right target. When you do it, you don't know if it's going to take the guy who's going to hurt the most. 
Uh, and most importantly, when you're 1v1-ing someone with Mystique, this does almost no damage. Mystique is not really a damage dealer. Infiltrate is probably one of her best abilities. Uh, it's got a lot of text. It's basically the way you can say the long, the more you have to read, the better an ability is overall. Uh, she basically attacks pretty much everybody. <laughs> Uh, attack two targets that don't have stealth attack all targets that do have stealth clear stealth from each if they uh, No enemies had stealth gain stealth this ability does not remove stealth like oh, so look at this If Magneto is an ally this attack is unavoidable if Mr. Sinister is an ally flip one positive effect to a negative effect if you upgrade it it goes to two It's it's good, right, but is it it doesn't do damage again uh, it or at least com comparably at parity fights, uh, it gets a little bit additional attack, so you hit more people, making it a little bit better for raid, but definitely not better for uh, alliance war defense. And then flip two positive effects. Who knows when that's going to be relevant? Uh, Mimic Strike, she copies positive effects. If Magneto's an ally, copy three positive effects per hit. <laughs> so I've had Mystiques with a bunch of heal stacks after stealing a bunch of them from Luke Cage. This is kind of her big ability, and we'll see why when we get to Mr. Sinister uh, next, actually. But this is, she. everything she does kind of not only requires people to be around her, but requires them to be able to utilize those abilities. So on this team, she's good. If you splash Magneto as the fifth on this team, she becomes infinitely better. But then you're also kind of losing value out of characters like Pyro and Juggernaut and Toad and Blob and anyone else who's a Brotherhood character. So you lose a little bit. Uh, moving into Mr. Sinister. Uh, Mr. Sinister is a great endgame character that can really help break open the fights for you. When it comes to what you're investing in in Mr. Sinister, the most important ends up being Clone. Uh, this is how you're going to be able to make sure that the character you clone might even be stronger than the original based on what abilities they have invested in. So even if you want to see how strong a character with an ability uh, at max investment is, just clone them with Sinister. You'll get a really good idea, even with the damage uh, reduction. Uh, on War Defense, generate two ability energy for all Marauders and cloned allies. Uh, uh, and this is huge because on War Defense, 99% of the time, it means whoever he clones is going to have the opportunity to use their ultimate ability, but it also gives energy out to all of the characters who just took a turn, making it a little bit stronger and, and kind of closing the gap between characters like Strife, who taunt first for no reason and then usually dies, whatever. This is one of the abilities that I would recommend immediately investing in, but again, only if you're going to really go hard on Mr. Sinister. If you have a 30 or 40k Mr. Sinister, putting this ability on him is only going to make sure that you have the strongest possible 30 or 40k version of a character with lower damage and, of course, lower health. Uh, Mutant Geneticist. This is kind of a big deal because it happens every single time on War Defense. Uh, basically, if you leave Sinister up at the end of a fight, whether you've uh, maybe cleared one or two characters or uh, just got timed out, on spawn, he's going to generate three energy for himself, which means he's usually either going to be able to heal everyone up if they were taking damage or clone another person on his turn heals 15% of his max health plus 5% per Marauder's ally. Apply regeneration to the two most injured mutants. It is very hard to take him down unless you single target him. Now, he doesn't have a lot of health per se, and he doesn't have a great deal of armor, but there's a lot of things around him that make sure he doesn't take damage. On the Marauder ally's turn, this character's health is greater than 50%. Redistribute 10% of his health to that ally. So at, not only is he healing himself out, but he's making sure that the rest of his team stays slightly alive. Gives focus to everybody, gives max health to everybody. This tier four, absolutely phenomenal. The only thing that's interesting about it is on war defense, they gain an additional 30. So this changes from a flat 20% max health when you use the team outside of war to 30% specifically on war defense. They're a very tanky team. 
the defenders uh, kind of make up for that. I keep using the defenders as a conversation point because that's how I beat this team a lot. So the defenders can beat this team, proving that it's not quite an overpowered team, just a team with a very specific need, which ultimately makes the defenders a little bit better. Gene therapy is kind of the last major thing Mr. Sinister does. He clears heal block off of uh, the most injured two allies. He gains offense up for two turns. Then every positive effect that Mystique has on her, Sinister takes. And then all of his positive effects get spread to any mutant on the team, any mutant that's including characters like Phoenix, Cyclops, doesn't matter if they're a mutant, Namor, they get it, or cloned allies, anyone who he happened to clone. I upgraded this specifically to give it to all of the characters because I like the ability to not only uh, build an entire mutant team with Sinister that doesn't necessarily have the Marauders on them, maybe just Mystique for this ability, but I really like using Sinister and Mystique. They work very well with Sabretooth, and we'll get into a little bit more on Sabretooth's kit, and then adding two other characters like I don't know, Phoenix and Colossus, or Cyclops and Colossus, or Namor for war offense teams. The Fantastic Four doesn't necessarily need Namor. You can use Drax on that team to kind of balance things out if you want. And then you can use Namor on the Marauders for an offensive team that makes them absolutely crazy. That said, Namor's pretty good on his own and already good on the Fantastic Four, so why break something that works? Basic, more damage, always get an assist from a random Marauder's ally. Again, defensive buff. It makes sense if you're using defense. On offense, it only helps if you only plan on using him with the Marauder's teams. I wouldn't necessarily invest in it. And last but not least, Sabretooth. I know it's crazy I'm using Sabretooth last, but Sabretooth is kind of one of my favorite characters, so I wanted to give him a little bit more attention. You'll notice I don't have any Tier 4s in him. It's because he doesn't need any. Now, I don't know why he doesn't need any. It might be the 6 Red Star. It might be the Gear Tier 14. But he seems to be doing pretty good as the mean damage dealer anytime I use him. Uh, one of the reasons I like him the most is Feral Healing. Uh, he gains damage per Brotherhood or Marauder Ally. Great. If Sinister is an ally, he gains a huge bunch of crit chance. Phenomenal. On turn, heal for 10% of this character's max health. Whenever he drops below 50% health, gain death proof. This is a pretty decent amount of self-healing, and it only goes up to a flat 15 or plus 5%. That might be worth it, but usually if I do lose him in a fight, uh, it's not his fault. It's my fault for taking a fight I shouldn't have. The assist, though... 10% chance to assist on non-attacking abilities, plus 10 per Marauder's ally. This is totally worth it. Uh, I don't use the Marauders, but I do tend to use Mr. Sinister with him a lot. So this goes to a 25% chance to assist any character uh, who uses a non-attack ability, including like a summon from Ultron or something like that. Then you gain a 15 per uh, there would be another 25% chance to assist a non-attack per Marauder's ally. That's not... If they take the action, that's any action taken if there's a Marauder's ally. So, basically, if you have Sabretooth, Sinister, and Mystique on a team, he has a 75% chance to just assist any non-attack ability. This includes Ultron's Minion Summon. This includes Ultron's Minion Summon, or JJ's Energy Spread, or... Sky's the limit and space is the place. You guys know how it works. So it's totally worth the investment if you plan on. But again, if I haven't done it and I have very high powered Sabretooth, it's not something he needs. It's just great to watch him do more damage and probably worth it. Blood Rush, damage. You know how I feel about investing in just damage. Uh, Thrash, a lot of damage, but still just damage. And of course, Claw Rake, just damage. Um... He is the damage dealer on, on his team. Uh, he does a lot of it, both on the front end when he hits and on the back end when the bleed stats take. So all of these are totally worth investing in, and I do have quite a bit of resources, so I don't know why I haven't yet. Mostly just FOMO, fear of missing out, I guess. But you wouldn't necessarily regret anything you put in Sabretooth, providing you're using this team. Um, 
thinking about where I would stop this team, I would feel very comfortable with a version of this team somewhere in the two to uh, 250 K power. Now that's of course, assuming that the fifth character is someone of note. And I gave you a couple of options earlier, Sabretooth and Mr. Sinister, Getting to about 50k is probably great. Strife and Mystique could probably lean back a little bit. And then whoever the last character added onto the team might have to anchor a little. So somewhere in the 200 to 250k is the break point where you're going to start feeling this team uh, mattering both on Alliance War defense and oh, anywhere else. But something I do want to tell you is when you see a placed Marauders team... Uh, even with Armory and Barracks buff and, and Med Bay, and you went, wow, that's a 300 and something K power team. It's lying to you because it's going in before all of the on war defense buffs that would normally take in. So all of those buffs that load in with the beginning of the game, the extra 50% health they get total instead of, or the extra, I guess, 30% instead of 20%. All of those buffs are factored in afterwards. So if you see a team that's about 300k on Alliance War defense, when you go into that fight and you wonder, wait, I should have had a better chance against that team. That team was probably closer to 320 or 330 just because of how buffs work when you place a defense team uh, based on how characters interact. It doesn't factor what they do for their team in until the fight loads. So I thought I'd let you know that. Anyway... That's pretty much it for the Marauders. Comment below and let me know what you think about this team. Uh, I, I, I don't want to do it, but I do have to give this team another low rating. It's going to be another B team because as far as endgame teams go, they're just fun and they're not even the best use of all of the characters, but they're an adequate defense team in war. Uh, kind of one of those things where if you work on some of them, you could just sit in and forget it and not worry too much. At least there's a chance someone doesn't know how to win the fight, but I wouldn't ramp them up. They're not going to be able to help you in a lot of different game modes. They're completely strange in that a couple of them are easily accessible, but not so much so that you would love to farm them. And Sinister is completely outside of the team right now. Can't get him and... Maybe when you could, it'd be okay, but it still wouldn't be something I would work on early or mid-game. I would definitely wait till later. So that's pretty much it. Tell me what you guys think about the Marauders and who you think the fifth character will be. I think it's going to be someone like Sunspot or Sunfire. I don't know, something with a sun in it, but that's just my guess. You guys let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I'll catch you later.